Welcome back, my dear Lightbos, to another review of Boku no Hero Academia, aka Boku no Greatness, aka Boku no Guilt, aka My Hero Academia. If you're a new viewer to my channel, remember to subscribe so we can part the Lightbulb army. And also remember to enable the notifications to never miss a video from me again. Now, the like goal for this video, like every video, is 10 likes, so don't forget to hit the like button. Let's get right into this. Now, before the review and stuff, I want to say thank you, Horikoshi Sensei, for giving us 200 chapters of My Hero Academia. When My Hero Academia reached chapter 100, I was so happy because that's a giant milestone for a manga to reach 100 chapters because a lot of new mangakas, their mangas don't even reach two chapters with their one shots and stuff or even 10 chapters. So this that was a big accomplishment. Now 200 chapters in. Thank you so much, Horikoshi Sensei. And in this um, chapter of My Hero Academia, he actually drew like a little cover with Midoriya and Ochako doing the peace sign. So 200 chapters in, hopefully 200 more chapters to go. Like, like, yeah, let's get 200 more chapters after this. That's what I'm trying to say. So, yeah, um, this chapter was relatively short, around 12 pages, I believe. And the recent Academia chapters have been really short. But you got to realize that mangakas have a deadline and they work really hard a lot of the time. I remember reading an article one time where it said, I forgot which mangaka was but they slept like maybe four hours a week. That's just crazy. So they work really hard. So Horikoshi Sensei, I am fine with 12 chapters. I mean, I said 12 I Imagine 12 chapters a week, 12 pages uh, a week. That That's fine with me. Um, it'd be nice if he took a two or three week break. That would be fine with me as well, even though a lot of people complain about that about that just uh, for rest. Now let's talk about the chapter. Since it was a short chapter, I'm gonna pinpoint the things I really wanna talk about. One of the things is that Momo still, she kind of doubts herself. And when Kendall said all of those things about Momo saying, oh, you're better than me and all this stuff, I, I don't like when people put us as a package. But in reality, Momo herself feels like, Oh, she kind of not looks up to Kendall, but respects Kendall for all her brilliance and stuff and being the class president of class 1B. And, you know, Kendall's a really smart girl. And Momo has insecurities about herself like anybody does. But at the end of the day, Momo has experienced a lot of stuff in combat and stuff against villains and things like that. And because of that, she's not just going to give up against Kendo. She actually, even though herself, she doesn't believe like she's better than Kendo. She wants to prove it because Kendo thinks that. You know, so Momo wants to do her best against this ba in this battle, and one of the best things was towards the end, Kendall versus Momo when Momo was think when not Momo somebody was narrating, and they're like, okay, Momo's always thinking, so that means he's gonna create things really really fast because her creations are based on how fast she thinks. If she makes a shield like she did, she make a really, she made a tungsten um, shield this chapter, which was cool. But if she doesn't think fast enough and she makes a shield, it's gonna break easily. So I I don't know what Momo's gonna create, and it's definitely gotta be like an offensive type weapon or something because I don't, she can't just keep defending against um, Kendall's giant fist and that's it. So she definitely gotta attack. She could make a net. She could do a variety of things. So I'm really excited to see what Momo creates um, to fight against Kendall. Or she could even make a sword and a shield like a knight. But hey, hey, I'm just being too optimistic. Or a katana. I like I like katanas. Anything sword fight in anime or manga i love it and i i would love to see it but the thing is if she has a katana you know that's kind of a deadly weapon and they're heroes they're not villains now let's talk about mushroom girl mushroom girl's quirk literally allows her to grow mushrooms everywhere even on somebody's body um they didn't specify a radius so that means he probably could she probably does have a radius on how far her mushrooms could grow but we saw like a mushroom kingdom basically so mushroom girl is just laughing having fun and even invisible girl uh her silhouette is disappearing because of the mushrooms and she's like embarrassed about that so that was kind of funny um will we ever see invisible girl or she will be invisible forever now the thing is with invisible girl is obviously quirks have their limitations so is she like their drawbacks not all quirks but the majority of them so does invisible girl's quirk ever have a limitation maybe when she goes to sleep she turns visible like it'd be cool if we get to see her later in the series 
um, because she's she has just been invisible for the entire series. Like, if she can't manifest, if we can never see her physical body, then fine. But that's like, come on, like you could have your quirk activated forever. That that's how that that's in, that's interesting. I, I just find that really interesting. Now we get the mighty, the great Comic Man. That that's literally his hero name, I believe, Comic Man. Which his quirk is onomatopoeia, and he basically enhanced the mushrooms by creating humi humidity by cr forming the words humidity, and basically the mushrooms grow grow faster because of that. And Mushroom Girl also had this device, like this spray. I I don't know what it did. I think maybe cr made the air more humid as well. So that's a really interesting core combination there, and they're really working really well um, strategically Class 1B, but what Kenta failed to realize is that Momo is no pushover, and having a one-on-one -on -one against Momo was not the brightest idea, like they pointed out, so I cannot wait to see how the fight between Kendo and Momo concludes. And great chapter, nevertheless, I I'm really liking the, you know, these battles, Especially see Class 1B members' quirks because we didn't get to see a lot of these members' quirks at all. So I'm really happy about that. Especially Comic Man. He said, <laughs> Comic Man just looks so Comic Man, his face, it, it, it's so cool. I, I, I like it so much. Uh, I like when Horikoshi designs characters like this. Obviously, not all the characters are going to look human, and I am completely fine with it. Especially when they have such interesting quirks like this. Once again, thank you, Horikoshi, for 200 chapters. I'm going to give this chapter a 7.5 out of 10. Hope you enjoyed this review. And if you did, remember to have a plus ultra day. Peace.